Hello, friends. Welcome to 3ABN Sabbath School Panel. Mm -hmm. It never gets old to say that. I love the Sabbath School Panel. We all receive such a powerful blessing each and every week, mm -hmm. just opening the Word of God. This is what this program is all about, mm -hmm. getting deeper into God's Word, coming to know God more through a study of His Word. And uh, we're excited because we're making our way through the book of Genesis. Uh, Genesis means origins, and that's what, exactly what we're studying. We're studying the origins. And we've been looking at Abraham, and we're going to continue through the story of Abraham today. But before we do, let me introduce the panel. To my left, we have Miss Jill Morricone. Always a blessing to have you, sister. Thank you, Pastor Ryan. Excited about this lesson. I have substitutionary atonement. Mm, interesting. Yes. Pastor John Lomacang, it's always a blessing to have you, brother. <laughs> yeah, mine is a bittersweet focus on the death of Sarah. Mm -hmm. Quite a few lessons for couples that mm -hmm. experience life together. I'm looking forward to it. Wow, yeah, me as well. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. And of course, to your left is Miss Shelley Quinn. I'm How are you? Going, I'm going to talk about a wife for Isaac. Praise the Lord. And last but not least, at the far end of this big table, Pastor Kenny <laughs> Shelton, always a blessing to have you, brother. It's always good to be here. I'm going to be looking at the, uh, a wife for Abraham. All right. I, I guess we could have said another wife. <laughs> You'll see, right? right? We get into the lesson. That's right, absolutely. <laughs> Lesson number eight is entitled, The Promise. And before we pray, I'm going to read the memory text. This is coming from Genesis chapter 24 and verse 1. And this is from the New King James Version. It says, Now Abraham was old, mm. well advanced in age, and the Lord had blessed Abraham in all things. Yes. So before we go any further, I'm going to ask Pastor John Loma King, if you don't mind, brother, to have a prayer for us. Sure. Let's bow heads. Uh, gracious Father, we have learned again that when we start at the beginning, you walk us through the valleys that we have missed, the peaks that we have overlooked, mm -hmm. and the lessons that have now impressed us again for the first time. Mm -hmm. We pray that you'll bless our hearts and minds today as we step through the pages of the Holy Writ and mm -hmm. speak into our ears what the Spirit would have us to say to those who are watching mm -hmm. and listening to this program. Mm -hmm. But may all the glory go only to you. In Jesus' name, mm -hmm. amen. 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 Yeah. amen. Praise the Lord. You know, Sabbath afternoon's lesson was power packed with all of these powerful points, connecting all the dots and setting the foundation for what we're going to be studying this week. I just felt like I just needed to read through it because it was worded so well and really sets a great foundation for what it is we're studying. It says, finally, as God had promised, Sarah bore Abraham a son in his old age, according to Genesis 21 and 2, and he named the baby Isaac. But the story of Abraham is far from over, reaching the climactic moment with him taking his son to Mount Moriah, which is what mm. I'm going to be talking about in a few moments. Mount Moriah to be sacrificed. Isaac, however, is replaced by a ram, which signified God's commitment to bless the nations through his seed. That seed, of course, was Jesus. Hence, in this astonishment, in this astonishing, uh, in, in some ways, it says, in some ways, troubling, mm. a story says more than the plan of salvation is revealed or more of the plan of salvation is revealed. It goes on to say, whatever the deep spiritual lessons here, the family of Abraham, nevertheless, must have been shaken mm. by it. And the future of Abraham is not clear. Sarah dies, as we're going to see, Sarah dies after the sacrifice of Moriah in Genesis 23, and Isaac remains single. Abraham then takes the initiative to make sure that the right future will follow him. He arranges the marriage of Rebecca in Genesis chapter 24, as we'll see, who will give birth to two sons. Of course, and, and Abraham himself gets married to Keturah, uh, which Pastor Kenny's going to tell us about, who will give him many children. This week we will follow Abraham to the end of his life. And of mm -hmm. course, uh, Sunday's lesson starts out at Mount Moriah, that great scene that takes place at the top of Mount Moriah. Of course, Mount Moriah is a famous uh, biblical landmark. We, we come back to Mount Moriah many times in the scripture. But, you know, this, is, this study, this particular lesson here is dear to my heart because I remember growing up, mm. I had certain family members who, you know, were professed Christians but um, didn't believe certain aspects of the Bible just because they felt like it was unbelievable according to the character of God. Mm. And, and they, it was just a lack of understanding. And I remember certain family members saying, you know what, I believe in, in parts of the Bible, but there's certain parts of the Bible I just don't believe was inspired by God. Mm. And one of those stories was the story we're going to read this morning or study this morning about how Abraham was asked by God to sacrifice his son atop of Mount Moriah. Mm. And so we're going to clarify, we're going to mm. make the story, we're going to set the record 
record straight All because right. uh, we know that God had no intention of, of, of Isaac going, or excuse me, of Isaac being murdered or, or taken by his, his father. In this case, we're going to see that God had a plan yeah. and Abraham followed through with that plan very well. So let's start right there. We're actually in Genesis chapter 22 and we're going to read verses 1 through 12 and we're going to make some comments along the way. So uh, starting in verse 1 of Genesis chapter 22, it says, Now it came to pass after these things that God tested Abraham. Press that pause button for just a moment. Does God test his people? Amen. Does God well, test his people? Does God often test yeah. us? We yeah. see examples of this all the way through scripture. We see it with Adam and Eve. They were tested, obviously, with mm. the tree. Obviously, Job. Was Job tested? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, just, a, just mentioning a few. Was the nation of Israel tested? Oh, yeah. Woo, they were okay. tested. Hezekiah, King Hezekiah is a great example. What about the three Hebrew children, Hananiah, Mishael, Azariah? Were they, were they put through a test oh, during the days of Daniel and Nebuchadnezzar? Probably the greatest example of all. Was Jesus tested? Yeah. yeah. My goodness. Right. My friends, God sometimes will allow us to be tested. Yes. He wants us to be tested to see where our faith really lies, where yeah. our allegiance really lies. And in this case, he's going to put Abraham through a test. Him and Abraham's been through a lot. Mm -hmm. And so notice what it says. God tested Abraham and said to him, Abraham. And he said, here I am. And he said, take now your son, your only son, Isaac, whom you love, mm. and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains of which I shall tell you. It's heavy. Wow. Verse 3, So Abraham rose early in the morning and saddled his donkey and took two of his young men with him and Isaac his son. And he split the wood for the burnt offering and arose and went to the place of which God had told him. You know what's amazing about this, this part right here, which I was astonished because if there was it, the Bible doesn't record. But notice how there's, there's no argument on the part of Abraham. That's right. Notice how the Bible doesn't record any, no questioning. Well, well, but wait, God, what? Hold on, hold on, no. what, Lord? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you, I mean, he's, what is he now? I mean, he's, 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 he's probably a young, young man, a young teenager, but perhaps. Mm -hmm. In this case, he's waited all the way till he was 100 years old before God answered his prayer finally and coming forward and giving him a son. And now he's like, wait a second, you just gave me this wonderful son. You finally came through with the promise. And now you're asking, you, there's, no, there's no rebuttal. There's no record here. You can already see the faith of Abraham because what does that part say in there in verse three? And Abraham rose early in the morning and saddled his dog. Yeah. He just got up and went about his business. Mm. He said, okay, Lord, let's go for this. Notice verse four. Then on the third day, I like that, on the third day, yeah. you already start to see this imagery, the foreshadowing of the cross of Christ. On the third day, Christ was with us for how long? Three and a half days. On the third day, mm. Christ, of course, would begin or would, would uh, be inching closer to the end of his ministry, the end of his life as our, as our Savior. Verse 4, then on the third day, Abraham lifted his eyes and saw the place afar off. And Abraham said to his young men, stay here with the donkey. The lad and I will go yonder and worship and we will come back to you. Mm. Did you catch that? Mm -hmm. Did you catch that detail? And who will come back? We. And we will come back. This is further evidence of Abraham's faith. Or his, his faith. Mm. He knows God. He knows God. He know, you know, he, Abraham has been through some stuff with God. Oh. At this point, you're starting to see, and they've had a long relationship together. And now you're starting to see Abraham's faith. You know what, guys, stay here. We're going to go up this mountain. He's got the wood. He's got the, the all of the equipment. They know what, they know what's about to happen. They know mm. according to what they're bringing and where they're going. What they're, they know what's about to happen, but yet he, he promises them. He says, we're, we're going to come back together. Wow. We will be yeah. back here. So Abraham took the wood, this is verse 6, and the burnt offering and laid it on Isaac his son. And he took the fire in his hand and a knife, and the two of them went together. But Isaac spoke to Abraham his father and said, My father, he said, Here I am, my son. Then he said, Look, the fire and the wood, where is the lamb for a burnt offering? Mm -hmm. And Abraham said, My son, God will provide for himself the lamb yes. for a burnt offering. So the two of them went together. And notice that God will provide not you know at this point he said well son you know hey, God's told me to take you up this oh, mountain and, and 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 take your life you know mm. as a sacrifice for him but he says you know what God will provide yeah. Abraham knows something mm -hmm. Abraham knows something 
He is in full connection with God. He's full of the spirit of the Lord. And he knows he's, he's putting full trust mm. into God and his word and, and the relationship that they've had. Abraham knows something. His trust is so strong in the Lord that he even tells his own son, look, son, hey, God will provide a lamb. He will provide his sacrifice. Mm. And then it goes on to say here, then they came to the place which God had told them. And Abraham built an altar there and placed the wood in the order. Uh -oh. And he bound Isaac, his son, and laid him mm. on the altar upon the wood. Yeah. And Abraham stretched out his hand and took the knife to slay his son. Mm. But the angel of the Lord, we've heard this already. The angel yeah. of the Lord, this is God himself speaking. Yeah. The angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. So he said, here I am. Yes. In verse 12, and he said, do not lay your hand on mm. the lad. Or do anything to him, for now I know that you fear God. Yeah. Yeah. Since you have not withheld your son, your only mm. son, from me. This is powerful. I love this story because this is, this is, this is a replication or a, uh, this is a perfect example of the attitude of God the Father towards us and giving up His Son, His beloved Son. Yeah. This is the cross, my friends. The wood is laid on His back. Okay, and as we're going to see in just a little bit, not going to get too much in it, but of course God provides the ram and where is the ram caught? The ram's horns are caught in a thicket or in, in thorns perhaps. Oh, Remember a mercy. crown of thorns up on the head of cross? We're seeing all of, this, all of this beautiful, beautiful imagery pointing towards the plan of salvation, how Jesus Christ will give his life for all mankind. And it's interesting here, I'm just emphasizing the faith of Abraham, not to lift up the man, oh, hey. but the spirit that is dwelling and working through this man as he is humbling himself, mm. as he is putting himself in full trust under the Lord. And Hebrews 11, I want to go to Hebrews 11 verses 17 through 19. It really amplifies the mentality of Abraham as he's preparing to, to again follow through because I believe Abraham was he knew it he knew that the Lord was going to come through but nonetheless he was not going to waver one bit he's uh -huh. not saying you know all right Lord how about now are you going to uh -huh. show up now uh -huh. what about now are you going to show up now uh -huh. he knew that even if he had brought the knife down and taken the life of his oh. son that God was still going to come through notice Hebrews 11 uh -huh. verses 17 through 19 it says by faith Abraham uh -huh. when he was tested offered up Isaac. Mm -hmm. And he had, notice, he who had received the promises offered up his only begotten son of whom it was said, in Isaac your seed shall be called. Concluding that, notice this, God was able to raise him up even from the dead from which he also yeah. received him in a figurative sense. This is powerful. Abraham's walking up. I mean, it's a man on a mission. He's walking up this mountain and he knew, you know what, even if I do have to take the life of my only son mm. whom I love so dear, I trust in God to do what is right to even resurrect this young man because he's promised me that he's going to take this seed and make a great nation. Do you trust God like that? There you go. Mm. When God has asked you, do, can you trust God and believe in God and put your trust in God even in times when you don't fully understand, right. even when the answers may not be laid out right in front of you, do you place your trust in mm. God? There's a lesson to be learned yes. from Father Abraham in this case. <laughs> Thank yeah. you, man. Thank yes. you so much, Pastor yes. Ryan. That's an amazing it's really an amazing story. Yes, you know, it, I just it is. I'm just getting a little teary-eyed sitting yeah, here listening yeah. to you, thinking mm. of that sacrifice mm. and that willingness. Abraham's faith is incredible. Thank you, Ryan, Amen. for that. Yeah. I'm Jill Morricone, and I have Monday's lesson, which is God will provide. <laughs> That's right. So That's right. I'm going to yeah. divide the lesson into two portions, mm. the theological understanding and the practical understanding. So let's start with the theology. What is substitutionary atonement? Because mm. that's what our lesson's about. All God right. will provide yeah. himself the lamb. What is substitutionary atonement? A substitute is someone who simply takes the place of another. Mm -hmm. Jesus took my place. Yes. Atonement is paying the penalty for a wrong committed. And when it is paid, we see at one man. We see reconciliation. Mm -hmm. We see that healing taking place. What was the penalty? What's the wages for sin? The wages of sin oh, is death. death. Mm -hmm. So if the wages of sin is death, Jesus did the atonement. Mm -hmm. Jesus died as a substitute in our place so that we have the opportunity to be reconciled back to the Father. Amen. We have the opportunity to have that at one minute. 
There's a couple of scriptures I want to reference. When we talk about Christ's substitutionary sacrifice, let's go to 1 Peter. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 24. It says, who himself, this is Christ, Jesus, bore our sins in his own body on the tree. This is substitutionary atonement. Mm -hmm. Him taking my penalty, mm -hmm. your penalty, that we having died to sins might live for righteousness by whose stripes you are healed. Yeah. What about yes. Isaiah 53? This is the serve, oh, suffering yeah. servant. Yes. Isaiah 53, verse 5. He, Jesus, was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him. And by his stripes, yes. we are healed. Yeah. What about 2 Corinthians 5, 21? You know I had to get that one. Right. <laughs> this double imputation for God made Jesus. Yes. He made him who knew yes. no sin. Yes. Jesus was the perfect spotless lamb of God to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Mm -hmm. So what is happening? My sin is imputed to Christ. Christ's righteousness is imputed to me. Mm -hmm. Substitutionary atonement. Amen. We see this on Mount Moriah. Ryan already read verse 8. We're in Genesis 22, verse 8. What did Abraham say? My son, God will provide for himself the lamb for a burnt offering. The Hebrew verbal form literally says, God will provide himself mm, as the yeah. lamb. The verb yeah. provide can mean provide himself. What is he saying? God will provide himself as the lamb. Mm. Amen. Jesus is the sacrifice. When the test was over, when Abraham's faith and obedience were tested and God had cried out from heaven saying, Abraham, Abraham, do not slay your son. What happened? Verse 13, Genesis 22, verse 13. Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked and behold, there was a ram caught in a thicket by its horns. I love what you said, well, Pastor Ryan, there about the thorns. I love that. Mm -hmm. So Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up for a burnt offering instead of his son. That substitutionary atonement. The ram took Isaac's place, mm -hmm. right? That's right. The ram was sacrificed in the place of Isaac. Mm. That's what Jesus did on the cross. Praise God. For you and for me, took our place, yeah. took our sins, paid the penalty of the law, the wages of sin is death, so that you and I have the opportunity to receive forgiveness of sins and to spend an eternity with Him. Yeah. Genesis 22, verse 14, Abraham called the name of the place, the Lord will provide. Mm -hmm. As it is said to this day, in the mount of the Lord, it shall be provided. Right. Now let's look at the practical understanding of this. Mm. Do you know that God will provide? Do you know in your life that God will provide? Yeah. Have you experienced a test? Maybe not like Abraham, mm. but have you experienced a test where it seemed there was no way out? Mm. Has God provided for you in your life? Mm. Do you know that God will provide? Jochebed did. Mm. Moses was destined to be killed because all the baby boys born in Egypt were to be killed. And yet God provided a basket and the daughter of Pharaoh mm -hmm. so that he could it later saved the children of Israel. Do you know that God will provide? The Israelites did, the Red Sea in front, the Egyptian army behind, no way to go forward, but God provided a way and opened the yes. Red Sea mm -hmm. so that they could go forward on dry ground. Do you know that God will provide? The Israelites did yes. when they had no food and he provided manna miraculously every single day yes. and water to drink. God provided for them. Mm. Esther knew that God would provide. She and her people were bound for annihilation. Uh -oh. And God provided and extend, the king extended the scepter to her. Mm. Nehemiah did. The city of Jerusalem was destroyed and burned with fire. And he was wanting to know what to do. And God provided when he sent up that prayer to heaven. Mm -hmm. God provided a way for him to go back and to help rebuild. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Rahab did. Her city was surrounded by the uh, Israelite army and God provided through the red cord hung out the window and mm. God saved mm -hmm. her and her family. Mm -hmm. yeah. right. Peter knew God would provide. He was in the prison and guarded right. heavily. And yet God opened up the prison doors mm. and set him free. Mm. What are the ways that God provides for you? 
I would say that there's seven ways that he provides well, right, for us. We're going to do now. this quickly. The first way he provides is supernaturally. This is the ravens. That's supernatural, right? Bringing food to Elijah by the brook Cherith. Mm -hmm. This is the Israelites. Their shoes didn't wear out. That's supernatural. The manna was provided. That's supernatural. Mm -hmm. Philippians 4, 19. My God shall supply all your needs right. according to his riches and glory by Christ yeah. Jesus. God can provide supernaturally for you. That's right. That's Number right. two, the yes. second way he provides. God provides through angels. Did you know that? Psalm 34, verse 7. The angel of the Lord encamps around yes. them who fear him and delivers them. Sometimes God provides supernaturally. Sometimes he provides through angels and sometimes they're in the form of men. And that's number three. God provides through the care of others. I'm reminded of Matthew 25, verse 40. And the king answers and said, Inasmuch as you did to one of the least of these, my brethren, you did it yes. unto me. Galatians 6, Pastor John, verse 2. What does it say? Bear one another's burdens. That's right. And so fulfill the law of Christ. God provides through other people mm -hmm. who step into our lives mm -hmm. and minister to us if we need food or clothing or shelter mm -hmm. or spiritual prayers or help. God provides for other people. Number four, God provides strength during the journey. Oh. I love this one. Isaiah 43. Do not fear, O Jacob, O Israel, the God who formed you. I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. Mm -hmm. You belong to me. Mm -hmm. When you pass through the waters, you notice it doesn't say you're not going to pass through the waters. <laughs> I'm going to prevent you from yeah. passing through the waters. Mm -hmm. You're not going to go through a hard time. No. Mm -hmm. When you pass through the waters, I'm going to be with you. When right. you go through the fire, yes. you will not be burned. God provides the strength that you and I need on the journey. Yes. Number five, Amen. God provides peace in him. Amen. Philippians 4, 6 and 7, be anxious for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known to God and the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. That's right. No matter what test you are going through, God will provide peace in the midst of that. Yes, he Number six, God provides joy <laughs> in his presence. Now, who would have thought when you're going through a test that you could walk in joy? Psalm 16, verse 11, you will show me the path of life. In your presence is fullness of joy. Amen. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. That's right. Number seven, God provides healing. Jeremiah 17, verse 14. Heal me, O Lord, and I shall be healed. Mm. Save me, and I shall be saved, for you are my praise. Now, this is physical healing, yes. This is also spiritual healing. This is also mental healing. Mm -hmm. This is also emotional healing. Yes. Now, I told you there were seven ways that God provides, but there's actually one more, and I saved the best for last. God provides <laughs> Salvation. Mm. Praise God. Oh, right that's right what now. this lesson's about. That's Substitutionary right. atonement. Right. God provides salvation when you're stuck in sin, yes. in the mire of sin and guilt and condemnation. The Lord Jesus comes to you and says, I will take your place. I will take your sin. I will take that and yes. you can walk free. You can be saved in my kingdom at last. Amen. 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 Praise yes. the Lord. That's you're never right. going to go thirsty or hungry after Jill finished <laughs> teaching. She's <laughs> always got a problem brings us a full meal. All right. so thank you so much. It's such a blessing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> We're going to take a short break. Mm -hmm. We'll be right back. Ever wish you could watch a 3 of Ian Sabbath School panel again? Or share it on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter? Well, you can by visiting 3 com. A clean design makes it easy to find the program you're looking for. There are also links to the Adult Bible Study Guide so you can follow along. Sharing is easy. Just click share and choose your favorite social media. Share a link. Save a life for eternity. Welcome back to 3ABN Sabbath School Panel, and we're going to toss it to Pastor John Loma King for Tuesday's lesson. Thank you, Ryan. Uh, we're talking about the death of Sarah. It's an indelible, amazing love story in the Bible, which in so many ways reminds my wife and I of each other in our journey because it begins with an act of amazing, almost abandoned faith mm -hmm. to do something that would be so uninformed. We go back to when we began in ministry in 1987 and we prayed to, for the Lord to open the door 
And literally, we went out not knowing where we were going. Mm -hmm. And God provided everything that we needed. And he's still to this very day in the highs and lows, the good times, bad times, yes. the yes. times when we were, you know, in our valley of decision at whether or not to continue in ministry, mm -hmm. God pulled us through. But what's sad about the story is, you know, my wife, every, periodically, she says, you know, she always says, she says, you know, if I die first, you're going to be, you're going to remarry. I said, honey, no, there's well. no way that I'm going to have, I don't want to get to heaven and have to choose between two women. And I say that respectfully for those who are married more than once. Mm -hmm. But I said, I, I've already found, and we have on our wall, I found the one whom I've loved. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so this story of Sarah and Abraham reminds us of a couple that was always there. Mm -hmm. So it begins with a somber part of the story, the death of Sarah. Mm -hmm. and, um, and so Genesis 23, let's walk through that together. Mm -hmm. And Jill, I have seven quick points that I want to make about this story, but it's so important because, you know, the, the desire was God had given Abraham, he told him, I'm going to give you the promised land. And Sarah became, becomes one of the first recipients of the blessing of the promised land. Mm -hmm. We'll talk about that in a moment. So let's look at this toggling story as Abraham, now is, fa Abraham is now faced with laying his wife to rest. Mm. Genesis 23, verse 1. Sarah lived 127 years. These were the years of the life of Sarah. So Sarah died in Kirjath Arba, that is Hebron, in the land of Canaan. And Abraham came to mourn for Sarah and to weep for her. Mm -hmm. Then Abraham stood up from before his dead and spoke to the sons of Heth, saying, I am a foreigner and visitor among you. Give me property for a burial place among you that I may bury my dead out of my sight. And the sons of Heth answered Abraham, saying to him, Hear us, my Lord, you are a mighty prince among us. Mm. Bury your dead in the choicest of our burial places. None of us will withhold from you his burial place mm. that you may bury your dead. What a beautiful act. Yeah. Says, That's awesome. Pick yeah. whatever you want. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the story is amazing. He says, um, so it goes on, verse 7, Then Abraham stood up, and bowed himself to the people and land, the sons of Heth. Mm -hmm. And he spoke with them saying, if it is your wish that I bury my dead out of my sight, hear me and meet with Ephron, the son of Zohar for me, that he may give me the cave Machpelah, which he has, which is at the end of this field, of his field. Let him give it to me at the full price mm. as property for a burial place among you. Now Ephraim dwelt among the sons of Heth, and Ephron, the Hittite, answered Abraham in the presence of the sons of Heth, all who entered at the gate of his city, saying, No, my Lord, hear me. I give you the field and the cave that is in it. I give it to you in the presence of the sons of my people. I give it to you. Bury your dead. Then Abraham bowed himself before the people of the land, and he spoke to Ephron in the hearing of the people of the land, saying, If you will give it, please hear me. I will give you money for the field. Mm. Take it from me, and I will bury my dead there. And Ephraim answered Abraham, saying to him, My Lord, listen to me. Mm. Can you see the ba battle yeah. get back? I, I just want to give it to you. Come my on. Lord, listen to me. Mm -hmm. The land is worth 400 shekels of silver. What is that between you and me? Mm. So out of the silver for e so Abraham weighed out the silver for Ephraim, Ephron, which he had named in the hearing of the sons of Heth, 400 shekels of silver, currency, of the merchants. So the field of Ephron, which was in Machpelah, which is before Mamre, the field, and the cave, which was in it, and all the trees that were in the field, which were within all the surrounding borders, were deeded to Abraham as a possession in the presence of the sons of Heth before all who went in at the gate of the city. And after this, Abraham buried Sarah, his wife, in the cave of the field of Machpelah before Mamre that is Hebron, mm. in the land of Canaan. So the field and the cave that is in it were deeded to Abraham by the sons of Heth as property for a burial place. Mm -hmm. That's a five minute reading there. Yeah. But what I want right to go now. through, and I was willing to give the five minutes here because my seven points, I'll still be able to get it. I've, I've, <laughs> yeah. I've, 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 I praise the Lord for that. What I'm showing you here is Abraham wanted such respect for his wife's burial. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's right. Yeah. He didn't want to say, you know, they just gave me some land. He said, no, mm -hmm. I want, if, if my wife hears this story in eternity, mm -hmm. I want to be able to say to her, I 
bought the choicest ground for me. Mm. You know, it's easy to receive a gift, but sometimes you want to say, she's worth something. Come on. I want to put her in the place where I could look back and say to my sons and my sons and my sons, that's the property mom is resting. Yeah. He bought all the property, mm. all the choices, fields. He chose what he wanted and he paid the price for yes. it. I tell you, sometimes you got to put out the best yes. for those who mean the most to mm -hmm. you. And that's exactly what the story said to me. You know, people say, oh, it doesn't matter how you get buried. But in Abraham's sense, he gave his wife an amazing yeah, send off. Wow. Mm -hmm. And that phrase in when she was laid to rest, she was laid to rest in dignity. Mm. And I'm sure that as time went on, he told the story, let me show you where your mom is buried. What a story. Wow. So the question was asked by the writer of the story, what function does the story of Sarah's death and burial play in the fulfillment of God's promise to Abraham? One, let's go to Genesis 11, verse 29. And Jill, if I'm like you, I can make it happen. <laughs> <laughs> I begin by saying Sarai was with Abram when God called them to leave their country. Genesis 12, actually, verse 1. Now the Lord said to Abram, get out of your country from your family and from your father's house to a land that I will show you. Mm -hmm. And that to me, when my wife and I prayed and the family said, you guys, you going all the way to California. I mean, how are you going to make it? God didn't want us to be with family. Mm -hmm. We needed to be where we can grow. And the only one that yes. God wanted us to lean on was him. Good. And I want to tell you, mm -hmm. so we left having no idea where mm -hmm. we were going, mm -hmm. pulling everything we had in a little small five by eight. And God says, I got you. So I want to say to those watching yeah. today, wherever you may be in life, don't ever think that God somehow is short on property mm. or that God has a credit card with a limit. <laughs> no, God says the gold and silver is mine. Mm -hmm. And to this very day, we look back on the, on the, um, on the, um, the stone, what's the stone? The stone. Ebene Ebenezer. On the Ebenezers of our journey. Yeah. Thank you. I'm so <laughs> filled right now. On the Ebenezers <laughs> of our journey and our life of 38 years of marriage mm -hmm. has lines where we can go back and say, yeah. we were there together. Mm -hmm. We were there together. Mm -hmm. Elder C.D. Brooks told me this and I never forgot it. He says, when your life, when you and your wife are too old, where you cannot travel anymore. Yes. He says, Open your photo album and make sure you're in both, both of you are in the pictures. Mm -hmm. that's that's right. And that's a beautiful thing today. We've got over 150,000 pictures, <laughs> digitally speaking. <laughs> My wife is a photographer. She loves to do that, but it tells the story of our journey. Mm -hmm. And as Ryan said, she's getting younger and I'm getting older. <laughs> as he said, she still looks young. But the second thing is right. uh, when Sarah expressed the lack of faith in God's promises to give her a child, Abraham foolishly followed her example, hmm. but God brought them even through that. Yes. And unfortunately, we have two nations at odds to this very day mm -hmm. because they chose at a, at a fragile point in their life hmm. to not trust the promises of God. Mm. Yeah. Thirdly, both Sarah and Sarai and Abraham had to deal with the backlash of injustice to their maid. Mm -hmm. When mm. Sarah became jealous of the child that her maid had, yes. God said, no, you better send her back and fix that. And to this very day, God shows that we cannot deal with people in an injustice just because we feel that they are not worth our time mm -hmm. and attention. Mm -hmm. Number four, both Abraham and Sarah experienced the, fulfill the fulfillment of God's promise. Mm -hmm. When they were old, mm -hmm. God's promise came to pass. Yeah. And we have the blessing today through the seed of Abraham. That blessing is Christ. Yeah. Number five, God lists both Abraham and Sarah as recipients of his blessing. Mm -hmm. Look to Abraham, your father, and to Sarah who bore you. For I, called, for I called him alone and blessed him and increased him. And his increase became Sarah increase. Mm -hmm. Number six, Abraham and Sarah are recognized as examples of obedience to God. First Peter 3 verse 5. For in this manner, in former times, the holy women who trusted in God also adorned themselves yes. being submissive to their own husbands as Sarah obeyed Abraham, mm. calling him Lord, yeah. whose daughters you are if you do good and are not afraid with any terror. And number seven, Abraham and Sarah had their hearts set on the promised land. Mm. They both waited for the city who had foundations, whose mm. builder and maker is God. Yeah. And Abraham and Sarah were going together. Amen. 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 Right. Amen. So with my Amen. wife and me. Amen. 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 Praise Amen. the Lord. Good. Thank Amen. You. Sorry. Okay, I'm so Shelly good. Quinn, and I have Wednesdays, a wife for Isaac. I didn't know how to do this, yeah. so I'm just going to kind of 
Yeah. Tell you, I'm going to tell you the story because we don't have yeah. time to read the whole chapter. Genesis 24 is the condensed story. Remember, we've got over 300 mm. uh, years of history in the last 39 chapters here, but it's the condensed story of Isaac's marriage. And this takes place several years after uh, Sarah has died. Mm. The story is full of prayers. I love it because it's the prayers and the fulfillment of the prayers, That's right. which is what touches mm. you so much. So Abraham was 137 when Sarah died. So if this is several years later, let's say he's 140. That means Isaac's 40 years old. Yes. And yeah. he, Abraham is so concerned about finding the right wife for his son of promise because mm -hmm. he wants to perpetuate these covenant mm -hmm. blessings to the further generations. Mm -hmm. And so what he does, he doesn't want Isaac to marry an idolatrous mm -hmm. Canaanite. Right. That's right. He brings in his servant, mm -hmm. Eleazar, who by the way, this is so interesting. Eleazar at this time is the chief of staff, significant mm -hmm. authority. He's the one who would have been Abraham's heir Mm -hmm. if Isaac hadn't been born. True. But Eleazar was so faithful to Abraham mm -hmm. and yeah. faithful to Isaac, he even served Isaac. So what he does is he has him take this oath, putting his hand under his thigh, which we won't take time to explain, but that was a way that they did do a covenant oath. And he is sending Eleazar the servant. Mercy. Abraham is sending mm -hmm. him hundreds of miles away to his homeland of Haran, and he wants somebody from his family mm -hmm. to marry his son, one of his relatives, which was very commonplace. And it's interesting, too, that Abraham's relatives knew of the true God but they weren't free of idolatry yet. So, mm -hmm. so anyway, here this loyal servant takes off several, several hundred miles with 10 camels mm -hmm. loaded <laughs> with a, a, mm -hmm. a bridal dowry. Mm -hmm. He's on his way, but he needs divine guidance. And you know what? Abraham prophesies that the angel of the Lord will go with him. We know the angel of the Lord mm -hmm. is the, the God, the pre-incarnate Christ. Mm -hmm. So God was concerned with Abraham's wife. And listen to this. And this is a direct quote from the uh, quarterly. The reference to his angel and to the Lord God of heaven in Genesis 24, 7 points back to the angel of the Lord who came from heaven to rescue Isaac from being slaughtered. That's mm. in Genesis 22, 11. The God who controls the universe, the angel of the Lord who intervened to save Isaac is now going to lead in this question of marriage. So now here he goes these hundreds of miles. He arrives at the well and here's what I love. When he reaches the well, the servant of Abraham prayer, prays in sincere childlike faith mm. to the God of the covenant. Mm. He's asking for guidance and wisdom and success because he needs God's guidance. That angel, the angel of the Lord with him to select the wife. Mm -hmm. And he asks for a sign and he's going to get it too. Right. Mm -hmm. So what's interesting is before he even finishes praying, into the scene at the well walks this beautiful young woman, Rebecca. Well. She's not only beautiful, she's virtuous. She's a virgin. Well. She is ready to serve others too. We're going to mm -hmm. see that. And she's a relative of Abraham's. Mm -hmm. So Elia Eliezer asks her for a drink and that's just hospitality that, you know, you would give a thirsty stranger a drink. But Rebecca, Rebecca doesn't only draw water for him, she offers to draw yeah, water uh, for his 10 camels. Now, you know what? Uh -oh. A thirsty camel can drink 25 to 30 gallons yeah. of water in 15 Ooh. minutes. My, my, my. Think Ooh. of how much <laughs> she was drawing water and pouring, drawing water and pouring. This was a real act of service. And you know what? 
Eleazar was just so stunned mm -hmm. by her generosity. <laughs> he just stood by and watched and he was praising the <laughs> Lord. So as a token of appreciation, he gives her a ring yes. and he gives her some bracelets. And then she invites him home. And when she gets home, oh, when he invites her home, again, I just have to point this out because to me, this is what it's all about. Mm -hmm. Eliezer is so overwhelmed with gratitude. You know what he does? He prays again. He bows down, right? Is when she invites him home. And he says in Genesis 24, 27, Blessed be the Lord God of my master Abraham. It's not forsaken mm -hmm. his mercy. That's that word has said, which means mm -hmm. his covenant love, his covenant faithfulness. And, she, and his truth toward my master, as for me being on the way, the Lord led me to the house yes. of my master's mm. brethren. So they get home and now you know what happens? Mm. Laban and Bethuel, and I think this wasn't her father Bethuel because Laban is the brother of Rebecca and he kind of takes control. I don't mm. think he would. I think this must have been an, a brother by the same name. But Laban... And you remember that we're going to find out Laban's kind of got a greedy nature. Uh -huh. He sees these rich <laughs> gifts that have been given to Rebecca. He looks out and he sees these 10 camels laid uh -oh. with gifts. And mm. boy, he pours out the red carpet <laughs> for Eleazar. Mm -hmm. And so what happens is Eleazar comes in and he explains all about how God has blessed Abraham, the covenant, how he's given him this son of promise and uh, that Abraham has sent him to this town to find a wife. Mm -hmm. And you know, it's interesting. I will give Laban credit for this. When they find out that this was directed by God, mm -hmm. they're ready to, to, they're not going to interfere with God's will. So what happens here we've got, they're going to release Rebecca mm -hmm. to marry Isaac if she wants to. There's mm -hmm. free will involved in this because even Abraham realized that someone yeah. may not come back. Well. But the whole point of the story to me is right here. As soon as they say that, Eleazar is praying again. Mm -hmm. This is the third prayer of the day. He's worshiping the Lord. Mm -hmm. And I think one of the main points is that Abraham had trained his servant mm -hmm. to know the true God. Amen. And Eleazar's faith is portrayed in the patience after his prayer in verse 21, in the worship to answered prayer in verse 26. And then here in verse 27, he's acknowledging the divine guidance. Oh, mm. may we be like Eleazar. So he gives the, uh, the servant gives the wedding gifts to Rebecca and the brother and the mother. And the next morning he's ready to leave. He said, no more delay. And the brothers are going, hey, wait. Our custom is, let us have a few days. We're going to throw a feast, give her a, a good send off. But he doesn't want to wait. So they consult Rebecca and unselfishly, she agrees to leave right away without any kind of a send off engagement party. And you know what's amazing to me? Rebecca's got no idea what Isaac looks like. Oh boy! She doesn't know he's a hunk. <laughs> you know, Isaac was a hunk. We, we well, know that now? because the Bible says he was well built and handsome. Oh, <laughs> I mean, that's what it says. You know, this is when you think about Potiphar's wife, All she right couldn't now. keep her eyes off of him. But Rebecca <laughs> doesn't know this. She's going. So as a wedding gift, one of the neat things is they give her her nurse, Dinah, who had nursed her from the time that she was All young. Right. And they go off on this arduous journey mm. through several hundred miles back by camel. And mm. when they arrive, this is really neat. God has directed Isaac out to the well mm. at Lahai Roy. Mm. This is where the angel of the Lord appeared to Hagar. And I'm sure he's out there meditating on the events of his life. He was so sorry, uh, sad about his mother's oh, death sure. and wondering about his bride. She sees him, Rebecca sees him. She covers her face with mm. the veil because that was the custom. He couldn't see her till afterwards. And she gets down from her camel to show her humility to meet her hunky husband to be. <laughs> and it, this is a condensed story. I'm sure Abraham oh, no. had a great party for her. But then what we see in the condensed story is 
following the ceremony, Isaac takes her to the tent of his mother and she mm -hmm. comforts him and he lifts the veil and goes, woohoo, God. <laughs> he sees what a beauty he's married. But this is something that we see that God is interested in every detail of our lives. Amen. That's oh, right. well done. Praise the Lord. I, yeah, I need a little more time on that. <laughs> yeah, she was putting in a lot of good detail. Praise the Lord for that. Thursday's lesson, you have your book, make sure you want to turn there. A Wife for Abraham. That's been discussed well along the line here. Some mm -hmm. very important points. I hope you've been writing those things down. I want to go right to our, our lesson. I want to take a paragraph or so and just read it because a couple of points. If Maybe if we don't get anything else out of it, we'll get this part here. I think it's important. I'm just going to read from our, our lesson quarterly. It says, The purpose of the genealogy after Abraham's marriage to Keturah, who gave him six sons versus the two other sons, Isaac and Ishmael, is perhaps to provide immediate evidence of God's promise that Abraham would father what? many nations. Interesting thought. And now the second genealogy concerning the descendants of Ishmael and also composed of the 12 tribes. And of course, God's covenant with reserve for the seed of Isaac. We know that, Genesis 17. And so, the, you know, here we have all of a sudden at this point in time, the, when some of this takes place, the report of Abraham's death is said, you know, is, is sandwiched between these, these two genealogies. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's, it's right in here, but we're gonna look at that a little bit closer and dissect it a little bit and see how that took place. After Sarah died, Thursday's lesson, Abraham married again. That doesn't, sometimes people say, no, I just won't. You married once, you, 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 you found the love of your life. Really, you, you just, you, you, don't, you don't look anymore. You just, you, you really just, you can't. Now, it doesn't mean that you didn't love the first one. If you did, right. Abraham simply here, it says, after he died, Abraham married again. That's where our lesson starts out. Mm -hmm. And sometime when disaster strikes, most of us, and you had it in your life, you've had disaster, and I'm going to talk about disaster for Abraham was the death of Sarah. Mm -hmm. It was yeah. devastating blow to him, mm -hmm. and it made him recount his life. Of course. Yeah. He had to go back and, 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 and look it all over again and say, man, there's some changes maybe that I need to make right now after all. And this happens too as we get older. There's changes that need to be made, and I need to make them now. I may not have time a little bit later on to make, make these changes. And you ask some people today, and especially when they're younger, I always love this in here, because you ask me, I always say, oh, you know, if it's any better, I couldn't stand it. That doesn't mean there's not <laughs> things going on, right? <laughs> it's not lying about it, too, because it could be worse. That's right. Yeah. It definitely That's could right. be worse. And sometime, I, one, one guy that worked here, and I don't know if he's still here or not, but love you anyway. I don't know who it is. You'll know. When he says, every time I said, how are you doing? He says, I'm living the dream. <laughs> there you go. I love it. I'm living the dream. Well, good for you. You know, by grace of God, we should be living that life, right, pointed toward heaven for sure. But sometimes living the dream can turn into a nightmare because mm. things change. Life changes. Things are dealt out that you'd, you didn't think would happen in your lifetime. You, you didn't think it would happen to you. It's going to happen to everybody else. In other words, when people say, when, when I die, I'm going I'm to go, I'm going to die in my sleep. Well, you wished. You know, that'd be nice. Not everybody can do that. So there's things, there's changes that happen. So we realize that death of Sarah just turned Abraham's life upside down. He missed Sarah. He was lonesome. That's all the way. Spent a lot of good years together. And he just was in his old age. And here, here, notice in, in uh, what is Genesis 24, 1, it talks about Abraham. It said Abraham was old. Somebody read, I think Brother Ryan might have read that a while ago. Abraham was old. Notice this. And well stricken in age. Well, I looked at that and I said, well, can I say this nicely? Well, that poor old man, you know, that it really does. It, it meant he was old in years, but he was mentally and physically sharp and strong. Man's man. I mean, there's no doubt. There's no doubt about it. Right. Why? Because the Lord blessed. That's what the scriptures say. The Lord blessed. Somebody read that in Matthew. Blessed Abraham. And so the events of chapter 24, some of you brought this out, took place about three years after Sarah's death. And that was recorded in Genesis 23. So keep all that down as fast as you can. Sarah was 90 when she gave birth to who? To Isaac. We know that. And you mentioned Isaac was, uh, well, was 40 years of age when he gave, uh, at the time of his marriage to Rebecca, right? In Genesis 25. And Abraham, we're talking, looking at, was 140. <laughs> well, to us, that looks like, oh my. 140 years of age at that time, Genesis 17. Now, Abraham became aware of his own age 
and, and some of us do. Sometimes it takes a little bit of time. When you're younger, you, 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 don't, you don't think about it so much. When you get a little older, you start thinking about, you know, some of these things. He became aware of his age. Now, remember, he was still good. Mentally and physically, the man was good. I don't know if he was good to look at or not, but anyway. <laughs> but anyway, after Isaac's marriage, then all of a sudden, what? Abraham became a little more lonesome. Well, he had his son there, you know, things was, was busy and things were going on. But now after uh, Isaac's marriage, he became even more lonely. He decided to take another wife. To, you know why? To make his last years happy. Now, that, and that can happen. And it did happen for him because it tells us that six more sons came right into being. Wow. But, you know, you, you look at it here, you think about there's no better place in, in a home than a mother or a, a wife, a good wife. I mean, this is what it's all about. God says the woman, you know, compares it to the church. Isn't that right? And, and, and a comely and delicate woman. And then he also, uh, she's to be treasured far above rubies. There's nothing like a good, can I just say Christian woman? Mm-hmm. Somebody that loves Jesus. And, and, and I've always heard it said, you know, if, if mama's happy, I'm going to say we're all happy. You know, so, you know, the husband's job is to make, Brother John, the wife happy. Right. And then we then we are happy. So that it's a good. So he wanted happiness in his his last few years. And uh, his new wife was Keturah. Now, it's a name meaning incense. Yes. Mm-hmm. But it's interesting. As you look in uh, Genesis 25, she's also called a concubine. Incense to me may be a sweet and, savor. Right. But in, in Genesis 25, she's called a concubine, just like Hagar was a concubine, right? There's some similarities there. Some of you read the lesson. A lot of, there was a lot put into it that maybe, you know, Hagar and, and the Couture was somewhat the same. And uh, you just, you study it for yourself. I'm just going to move on with that. So his marriage to Couture produced six more sons. I like that. Abraham loved all of his children. There's no doubt about it. He loved the, with Sarah. He loved it with Hagar. He loved them with Keturah. But before his death, please notice this, before his death, huh, he sent them all away. Man, that just tears me up to think about it. He, sent, he loved the women in his life. He loved the children in his life, but he knew there was going to be problems because of the promise to Isaac. And so he had to send those loved ones away. And I think Brother John kind of alluded to that. Sometime we need to get away from sometime, I don't want to say it ugly, family and friends and different ones who might have a pull on us so that God can talk to us and, and make some good sense to us. So he loved it. You know, this is scripture in Genesis 25, 6. But unto the sons of the concubines, which Abraham had, Abraham gave gifts and sent them away from Isaac, his son, while he yet lived. I want to try to make this this, this point, a couple of minutes left. I, I, there's so much more, but still, yeah, it's the point. While he yet lived, Abraham took care of God's business, mm-hmm. his business, mm-hmm. while he was still alive. A lot of people don't take care of God's business or things they should take care of that God has loaned you, that God has given you in this life. You think, well, when I die, I'll let the kids, so I've, heard, I've heard parents say that they can fight over it. Uh, not, mm. That's not a good issue. Wow. Yeah. Abraham was afraid there would be issues to the promise, right? And so he separated those from the concubine and the one from Sarah. Interesting. So there would be no problems. Mm-hmm. And so you, we find this here. It's important. God holds us accountable for what he gives to us in this life. Mm-hmm. And we are to... Can I be bold about this? Is all right? Sure. To be bold. <laughs> it, it may not be bold, somebody, but it, we need to take care of what we have. When it was all said and done, right, he had taken care of business. He made sure before he died that everything was in line the way that it should be. Just like with, with money, with property and things that God has loaned us, we need to return it back to the cause of Christ. Oh, be careful, Kenny. And, 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 don't, and don't be giving it to unbelievers. The devil has mm. had it long enough. Mm. God's you know, treasury needs it in there now to the winning of souls. That's right. Because you can't leave it and say, well, we'll let them fight or let them take care of it. God holds you. He holds me accountable for what he has Amen. given. I, I said many, many years ago, and God have mercy on me. I said many years ago, you know, if I, I die and have my will, my children... If they are not loving Jesus and they're not in the faith, they're not going to get anything unless they're mm. destitute. You can read that in the spirit of prophecy. If they're destitute, you leave them. If not, I'm not giving it to the worldling. I'm not giving it to be spent in the world. That's right. 
Oh, I got off the lesson. Is that what you said? <laughs> no, that's, or that's part. Why? Because he took care of business. While he yet lived, that's he right. took care of business. That's right. And while you are alive and I'm alive, we need to take care of business. So I'm going to encourage some of you to take care of business. I don't need to go that's farther right. in the lesson right now. With things that God has given you, put them into the work to win souls for the kingdom of God. Man, that's exciting to think about because I know that he's going to hold you. He's going to hold me accountable for those things he's loaned us. He didn't give them to the kids. They'll take care of it. Uh-uh. He's going to, right, it's going to come back on you. So God help you as you make right choices and right decision. And what? <laughs> while, he let, let, while he yet lived, he took care of business. Amen. Amen. Praise Amen. the Lord. Take care of business. Oh, man, that's that's right. Take care of your business. <laughs> Shelly, I could hear Brother J.D. I can hear him echoing that down there. Oh, Take yeah. care of business. Take care of business. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get some final thoughts. Amen. Uh, Monday's lesson, we talked about substitutionary atonement and what an incredible gift. Jesus, the Lamb of God, took Amen. your place, my place Amen. on the cross. Accept that gift today. You know, I know that Abraham remarried, but you know, the story ends in a beautiful mm -hmm. way. He goes back to the cave, back oh. to the land that he purchased from Machpelah. Mm -hmm. And the Bible says in Genesis 49, 31, and they buried Abraham and Sarah. There they buried Abraham and Sarah, his wife. Mm -hmm. And so this love story ends, right, I love what you said, the yes. companionship was necessary for him as he got older, but he never forgot. Come on. And the Bible says, and the field and the cave, they purchased from the sons of wow. hell. Mm. That's, so Amen. that's what Amen. he wanted to do. Amen. You know, the thought on my mind is that the most important decision you ever make is accepting Christ as your savior. But mm -hmm. the second most important decision you ever make is who you marry. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I encourage you to, to accept what God did for Isaac in choosing a mate. Seek the Lord mm. because God is interested in who you marry. Amen. Mm. You know, I know we all want to hear the words as God spoke to Abraham, simply says this, he was a friend I want to say of God. He was a friend of mine mm -hmm. and I know him. I'd love to hear those Amen. words. Amen. Praise the Lord. You know, second uh, only to Jesus Christ himself, yeah. Abraham is probably the most central figure mm. in all the Bible. And uh, so many of the life lessons as we've learned uh, from the story of Abraham. So mm. we've kind of just scratched the surface. You know, all the, yeah. some of us Come had on, entire man. chapters or two. Go back and study those powerful chapters mm -hmm. in Genesis about the life of Abraham. You'll learn a lot. You don't want to. You don't want to uh, miss out on next week because next week here on Sabbath School panel we're going to be jumping right into lesson number nine entitled Jacob, the Supplanter. So get your Bibles, Ooh. get ready. It's going to be a powerful Amen. lesson. Amen. We'll see you next week. Amen.